our modern lives, we are continually bombarded with images of war and its consequences on human life. Whether these are images of the war in Iraq, um, the violent destruction caused by exploding bombs in Egypt, or the cries of desperate children left orphaned in Afghanistan, we are compelled to view, bear witness to, and confront the pain of others. So given that this act of viewing the pain of those in other parts of the world is so integral to our modern experience, what are the effects of this viewing? Well, this is one of the questions I explore in my examination of Pat Barker's double vision. Um, I look at how war is represented, um, sorry, um, more specifically, uh, what are the ethical problems and the social responsibilities of witnessing images of war, violence, and human suffering? I look at how war is represented through photography and art, namely um, the art of a uh, 17th century um, Spanish painter and printmaker, Francisco Goya. And I pose the question also raised in Barker's novel, can such images of abject horror actually inspire something? Uh, can images of abject horror offer something more than simply despair? In other words, can artistic images of war, violence, and human suffering actually inspire hope? To examine these questions, let me first briefly introduce to you um, at Barker's double vision. Um, with the aftermath of September 11th and the con conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, Bosnia, and New York as its historical backdrop, this is a story uh, that looks at the social and moral vision of war trauma, visual art, and witnessing. Set in the pastoral village uh, in North England, it follows the double threaded narratives of Kate Frobisher and Steve Sharkey as they attempt to live their personal grief, live with their personal grief. Kate is a widowed sculptor who is recovering from the trauma of a recent um, car accident as well as recovering from a recent loss of her um, husband, a uh, war photographer who um, Ben um, Frobisher is a war photographer who's killed in Afghanistan in one of his missions. Um, Ben's colleague, uh, Stephen Sharkey, is a, um, a war photographer, uh, sorry, a war reporter who's recovering from uh, post traumatic stress disorder and who at the moment is writing a book on Ben, uh, is writing a book on the way war is represented. For Stephen, this task leads him to engage in an intertextual dialogue with various displays and non displays of war. Or rather, such displays prompt critical conversations that enable him to process and make sense of the trauma of war and the dilemma of showing it. One such display, of course, is um, that evokes a meaningful dialogue is this image of the burning twin towers. While discussing his work with Kate, Stephen recalls the reaction of Jules Mordet. Um, a documentary filmmaker who happened to film the aerial attacks of the World Trade Center and turned off his camera um, because, as he reasoned, nobody should have to see this. That is, see people burning. Um, what this incident demonstrates, however, is a particular response to the sight of war, that is, of deliberately obscuring the image of trauma. This image, is, of course, is um, historically significant to the way we understand our world um, and arouses strong emotions for the welfare of um, our fellow human beings affected by the devastation of this political act. But what about other images that we see on a regular basis? Um, are we apathetic to or indifferent to, sorry, immune to the pain inflict inflicted on those showing those images. In her book um, regarding the pain of others, um, which strongly influenced Barker's own novel, Susan Sontag elaborates on the problematic capacity of images to objectify um, the far away and sometimes not so far away suffering of fellow human beings. 
This is a quote from Sun Tag's um, novel, um, in which she interviews a woman um, in Sarajevo, um, who states that she herself is indifferent to uh, the images, uh, the scenes of the nearby Serbian invasion of Croatia. The woman says about looking at such subliminal footage, I thought to myself, oh, how horrible, and switch the channel. So how can I, if how can I be indignant if someone in France or Italy or Germany sees the killing taking place here day after day on the television or news, on the evening news, and says, oh, how horrible, and looks for another program. In addition to the indifference of everyday viewers, Barker also um, investigates the culpability of war correspondents. This is a photograph of um, the chief of the South um, Vietnamese National Police, General Duan Nguyen, shooting a Viet Cong uh, suspect um, in the streets of Saigon. And what is interesting about this image is that General Nguyen has staged this photo opportunity. Um, so it's staged the scene as a photo opportunity and would not have carried out this public execution had the uh, journalists not been there to record it. While war photographs do not themselves conduct these killings, uh, the role of photographer and um, executioner is nonetheless blurred since the photographer is still needed to be there to capture the killing. War photographers and correspondents, therefore, are paradoxically instrumental to the atrocities they set out to bear witness to. Despite the troubling codependent war crimes, however, Stephen draws inspiration from the work of Francisco Goya. Francisco um, Goya, who documented the brutality of war in 18th century Spain, culminating in his famous series of etchings, collectively known as the Disasters of War. The caption uh, that he uses in his etchings more significantly provide a means for Stephen and Kate um, to talk about the impact of during um, Lord's actions. In their discussions, Kate says, one cannot think of this. And Stephen says, yes, but then I saw it. This is the truth. It's the argument he's been having with himself all the time between the ethical problems of showing the atrocities and yet the need to say, look, this is what's happening. And I thought, oh my God, we're still facing the exact same problem. There's always this tension between wanting to show the truth and yet being skeptical about what the effects of showing it are going to be. In the oppositional lines, one cannot look at this and I saw, I saw it. Barker suggests that Goa is indeed alert to the anxiety of sight and yet is able to reconcile the ethical paradox of vision between looking away from and looking at horrible violence. Indeed, it is this reconciliation of the paradox of violence, uh, sorry, the paradox of vision, that inspires Stephen to respond to dual motives obstruction of sight by making visible the monstrosity of war. Therefore, despite the, ethical pro the ethically problematic role of war correspondents or the potential for the images to be misrepresented or even to incite further violence, there is Nonetheless, an ethical responsibility, um, as, as Stephen justifies it, to show it anyway, whatever the doubts, whatever the effects of showing. Because by showing, um, because by asserting that this is the truth, such images bear witness to what human beings are capable of doing to one another. For Stephen and Kate, Goa do not simply illustrate war atrocities in his artwork, more significantly, he portrays a double vision of trauma that serves as an elegiac framework for viewing the pain of others. One that acknowledges the reality of that trauma and yet embraces the possibility of hope in the depths of that despair. For Kate in particular, uh, Goa's painting um, The Prison Scene evokes a strong intellectual and emotional response. After observing Goya's, Goya's work at the um, Bowles Museum, she states she wondered whether, sorry, she wondered whether any photograph 
have a great could prompt the same complexity of response as this painting. Photographs of shock, terrify, arousing passion, anger, and even drive people to take action. But does this photograph of but does the photograph of an atrocity ever inspire hope? This do. These men have no hope, no past, no future, and yet seeing the scene from Goa's steady and compassionate eye, it was impossible to feel anything as simple or as trivial as despair. Although Barker does not dismiss the potential or harm for photography to inspire hope, Goa's collective artwork constitutes a visual narrative um, of war through which stories of death and misery, hope and renewal are shown and shared. For many people, um, especially for Kate and Stephen, and I think for some of us as well, hope is offered in these visual stories because they encourage deep discussions about ethical, um, the ethical depictions of violence and trauma. And these discussions ultimately form a workable narrative of war that helps us deal with the injustice of human suffering. For me, hope also lies in the knowledge that there are people who have enough humanity and compassion to realize, be touched by, and dedicate their lives to showing the pain of others. In other words, it is the real life artists like Francisco Goya or war correspondents like John uh, Pilger who make it their task to give voice to the voiceless, to give an image to those who aren't seen, and offer hope for the rest of humanity through the intellectual dialogues and the meaningful stories their work provoke, encourage, and stimulate. Therefore, as a take-home message, um, these visual narratives of war trauma through art and photography can ultimately offer victims, spectators like us, and perpetrators even of human atrocity a means to construct a workable story that provides meaning to the often meaningless trauma of history. Um, what does the literature say about the amount of blame that reporters should bear for images that you showed of the Viet Cong? What kind of blame is given to literature, if not in this book, in the literature in general? Sorry. 
she doesn't actually put so much uh, specific light and say that, you know, with that there, uh, with them there, then there's war. But at the same time, uh, she does kind of take their role. Thank <laughs> you.